you know, just going and growing through the process. Um, everybody's got different personalities. Uh, Darius is a big rah rah guy. And like you said, it's kind of been a little quiet, but uh, you know, everybody's got their own ways to step up and be a leader. So for me, you know, just being on my uh, details, attention to detail, execution, and uh, really just being a guy who leads by example. That's high now, and it all starts with, you know, the fans. You know, just hearing them scream my name, just knowing, you know, from the DMs I get from the people, just, you know, congratulate me on, you know, the two years I did have here, and then to the locker room with the guys like Gilly coming in, and Kenny always keeping me uplifted. You know, just the guys around me just keep me, you know, going, keep me motivated. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely, definitely something that I like to do that I'm trying to, learn to manage it because sometimes there's like times to take those hits and sometimes there's times to just get down so like I'm trying to find that like perfect like middle ground there. Hello and welcome to Grand Park as the sun sets on a full house here uh, for the third night of training camp with the the family night everyone was here tonight uh, only the third day of practice so far they're still kind of ramping up so we haven't seen a ton but tonight was a, a good night in terms of they actually had pads on. They did some one-on-one -on -one pass rush. Uh, there was some stuff going on in terms of the line of scrimmage that we haven't seen so far. But I think the big takeaway from today for me was a couple of big plays for Paris Campbell, big plays for Ashton Doolin. I, I kind of feel like the top four spots in this wide receiving core are more set in stone than people realize. Yeah, for sure. I, it feels like four locks at this point. Obviously, it's Michael Pittman Jr., Alec Pierce, uh, the second-round rookie, Paris Campbell, and Ashton Doolin. And even like we, we knew the top three was certain as long as Paris is healthy, but I think the emergence of Ashton Doolin has become notable. He's making a, a big play or two down the field um, once, once a practice, and we know he's a speed guy, but he's starting to show the hands. And I asked Frank Reich about it today, and he pretty much guaranteed a role for him in the offense, which is a little new. We knew he had a special teams role, but they really, really like the strides he's making at receiver. And it's answering some of the questions they have at a position where they obviously have more questions, but um, it's good to at least have a few answers. In a way, the spot for uh, Doolin kind of opened up in terms of Zach Pascal leaving. That was Zach Pascal kind of emerged in that spot a couple years ago, ended up playing uh, a significant role as a receiver for three years. I don't know that Doolin's going to have exactly that role. A lot of it depends on the health of some of the other wide receivers, how Alec Pierce comes along. But that, that spot for someone to come up and kind of take that role was always there. They, they lost T.Y. Hilton and Zach Pascal out of the, the four guys that played the most last year. Pierce kind of fits in Hilton's spot and Dooley kind of fits in Pascal's. Yeah, and Pierce, he's made a couple of plays here today too. I, I like For a lot of rookies, he's had some ups and downs, a couple of drops in camp, but today he had just an incredible play down the sideline, a, a back shoulder fade where he beat Isaiah Rogers and turned around and caught it. And I noticed Reggie Wayne just went out to him and he was so fired up. Like That's what he wanted to see developing for this rookie. So they're making strides here. And there is a world though where, I mean, it wouldn't be absolutely shocking if Doolin is, yeah, Zach Pascal light, like almost like the number two wide receiver statistically, Again, you hope Paris Campbell's out there. That seems obvious, but Alec Pierce is a rookie, so there's there's absolutely room for another breakout here. And I don't know, du Doolin's at least knocking on the door. Uh, the first time in camp, we had a little bit of a uh, injury concern. There, there was a collision. Uh, two routes kind of came together on the sideline. Moelle Cox ended up kind of getting tangled up with Stephon Gilmore. Gilmore initially was down and looked at trainers, came back and practiced. Ali Cox tweaked his knee. Uh, is what Frank Reich said. They don't think it's serious, but I would generally in training camp, even with something that's not serious, we probably won't see Ali Cox for a couple days. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, usually with injuries, they have to find out something after the practice. But for the most part, right now, still fairly healthy. I mean, Gilmore coming back and practicing is a really good sign. This early in training camp with the veteran, if there was any injury concern at all, he's sitting. So uh, another good night out here for the, the Colts. They're going to be off and doing walkthrough for a couple days. We'll be back in the middle of next week with some training camp reports from, from practices like this one. They'll be in full pads next week. Today with shoulder pads and shorts. It'll be full pads, full contact next week. For the Indy Star, I'm Joel A. Erickson. This is Nate Atkins.